Ladies and gentlemen, I keep my introduction welcome notes very brief. I hope you forgive me for that. Um, I just welcome all the friends of Sinkenberg, because I assume that's all what we are. And we all woke up this morning in a beautiful spring day, a bit cloudy today. But then as soon as we stood up, now we were paralyzed again by this brutal war in Ukraine. But at the same time, we are in the middle of a triple crisis of biodiversity loss, climate change, and pandemics, unthinkable in space and time. So for that crisis, we need all efforts and we need heroes. And we are very proud and honored that we have two of these heroes with us tonight. And Chris has been a dream team with Doug Tompkins, Chris and Doug Tompkins. And Chris and Doug is not with us anymore, but the dream is. And the team has even grown. And just recently, the Tompkins Conservation set off two offsprings, rewilding Chile and rewilding Argentina. And from these two operations, we have also some people here, Marcela, Carolina, Lupe, so you can meet these people here also tonight. And in that short video, Chris, you were spoken about masterpiece. And the masterpiece of nature, then of course nature is the master. But you have also been a master. You have been a master of restoring, protecting, and funding. And now by building up, rewilding, and uh, rewilding Chile and rewilding Argentina, you even lower your own name and to let others grow bigger. And with that, you're building on and you're continuing to build on your legacy and your legacy of wilderness as well. So, but ladies and gentlemen, what is, what is wilderness? And the best definition I found is the will of the land and not the will of us, of one single species, it's the will of the land. And Chris, you have given back the will of the land by taking away the fences and the livestock in the valleys, and you have given the will to the land, you have given the will to the jaguars and to the anteaters and to the nandos and to the makors and the guanacos and all what we have seen in that movie. And uh, I had the pleasure about eight years ago uh, to travel to a number of your parks together with my family. And from the first moment, uh, we were taken about the beauty of your operations. And really, the beauty starts by the napkins in the lodges, and then it goes to the dining room of the lodges, and then it goes to the lodges and the whole settlement. And then tiny little passes takes you into the beauty and nature and wilderness where nature is the designer. But you didn't even stop there. Now, so you worked with the communities in the surrounding and you renovated the houses to make them more beauty, dozens of houses in the surrounding of the parks. And you even didn't stop there and you made even gas stations and supermarkets more beautiful. No? So the concept of beauty now brings us to people love beauty and we protect what we love. No? So, Chris, you are awarded for these amazing national parks, for this amazing wilderness, but you're also awarded for inspiration and for being visionary and to be with you never give up approach. And you have never give up, you're a fighter and you have been fighting in times of diseases and death even. And by that you give the inspiration for us in these times. And therefore, Chris, you are highly recognized and awarded for the Senckenberg Award 2022 in the times of war and corona where you give us hope. And Chris, I really down to you for all what you have done for Argentina and for Chile and for the world. Thank you. Meine Damen und Herren, das ist der Moment, um richtig auszuflippen. Ladies and gentlemen, please freak out. Here she comes, Chris Tompkins. Congrats.
I'm on it. Well, um, <laughs> on behalf of my <clears throat> husband, Doug, the wild-eyed bush pilot visionary of so much of what you just saw, and our offspring of Tompkins Conservation Rewilding Chile and Rewilding Argentina, who are represented here tonight. Thank you to the Zinkenberg family for recognizing that science, for science sake, isn't enough. That you take science and you put it onto the ground and you go like hell and you make something out of it. Because without science, we can't do what we do. Thank you for recognizing that national parks are still the gold standard of conservation around the world, even though they're often underfunded and they have their struggles. And thank you for recognizing that communities, wherever you're working, you start there and then eventually you end there. Without human communities who benefit and recognize the dignity and and beauty of, of their lands, of their territories, of their neighbors, their history, their culture. We don't have wildlife, I think, in the future. So thank you for this. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to leave you with a little story. In the high latitudes of the southern cone, from the top of Chile and Argentina down to Cape Horn, the winds come across the, the Pacific from the west, and they hit the Andes, and they shoot up tens of thousands of feet in the air, and they come back down, bashing down the east side of the Andes, picking up Steve, speed, and they flush themselves out in the Atlantic Ocean. And if you get down on the ground and you put your ear in the dirt and you stop thinking about your life but hook in to the very place that you find yourself, you will hear millions of hectares of forests grinding and groaning under the force of these winds. You'll hear Wanako who are out there bickering and calling that there are pumas nearby. You will find jaguars free and stumbling forth since the first time since the 1930s. You will hear these macaws who since 130 years have not flown free. And you will find the center of your own heart beating along with everyone else. And so <clears throat> tonight, all of us, all of them, and the wind turns down just enough so we stand from down there in the southern cone and we look up to the northeast and here we are in Frankfurt and we all say thank you from the bottom of these hearts. Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> <Chris>. <laughs> Wonderful words. Chris, you're awarded tonight, but you've come down a long way. I've been to Pumalin, I guess. 25 or 30 years ago, a long time ago, and I remember well that at that time you weren't worshipped everywhere for your idea. There was a, 
There was an opposition in the local communities. They were afraid that these people from the northern part of America coming down, buying the land and doing something. How did you manage to overcome these, these uh, prejudices and this, all these resistance against the idea to protect the environment? Oh, I think, I think if we remember that wherever conservation is taking place, there is this natural and constant uh, collision between production and saving nature. So that's after a lot of years of being in the doghouse with a lot of people. But I, I think in, if you look at Chile in the early 90s, there was no precedent, especially for two foreigners coming in and, and acquiring large tracts of land and imagining everything that eventually you saw on the screen. And um, really, uh, it's finally focusing on what you're doing, involving yourself as good neighbors, as we were told when we were young. And um, eventually, people see that what the outrageous things that they mistrusted so deeply begin to unfold, they begin to engage. They're the people who built these farms, excuse me, parks. And um, eventually you, you form a new generation of thinking. And it happened in the United States, it happens everywhere, where suddenly growth isn't the only measure. It's can we protect the jewels of a country? Can we see this, this of course, ancient marriage between humans and the non-human world that we've lost in the last 200 years. And, and you can. <laughs> and, and that's the beauty of this. And, um, you know, I think so you that's convinced the them in the end. <laughs> and Chris, we, we know you're not going to stop here now. So what is, what is, your, next, what is your next enterprise? Well, uh, Carolina Morgada, with whom we, Doug and I, have worked for 27 years, is here tonight, and she should be up here to tell you about this, but we're working on a, on a big project in, down on the Straits of Magellan, very, very intense place to be working, um, up to maybe 1.5 million new acres of marine and terrestrial projects. Um, Oh, a lot of rewilding going on in Chile and in Argentina. Um, also reflecting a new generation, which we think is a new generation, of not just going for territory or deep sea, but rather that, that fine line, that productive line where the coast meets the sea, the zero to 12 miles. And, and instead of leveraging land for more land, leverage land for more sea. So, um, and then of course, rewilding wherever we're working. And that's exactly, I think, the call for action uh, we need. And because we are here in Germany, we need this call for action to the German government mm. because we are far behind what we should do as a fourth biggest economy in the world to lead towards the Convention of Biodiversity in autumn this year. There's no commitment yet from the global north to the global south now and to repay our bill of our incredible ecological footprint now and so i think having you here and having also professor antonelli you now for for the biodiversity research should be a call for action for one of the biggest economy in the world we should do really more thank you very much i want to oh, say Chris. one yeah. last thing yeah, of course congratulations to alex antonelli um He's a lot younger than I am, but he is a force for nature. <laughs> Thank you very much. And Chris Tompkins, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>